little instrument to have in your living room. Uh, the photographs showing you the shipyards, showing you the Moran brothers themselves, they, they look like gangsters. Uh, they're prominent businessmen uh, building the battleship the USS Nebraska. Now, halfway through the building of the ship in 1904, Moran was only 47. He was in the height of his career when his health began to fail him very rapidly. In fact, doctors diagnosed that he had what they called organic heart disease. They gave him six months, two years at the most left to live. Tragic news, Moran quickly retired, left his brothers in Seattle to finish the ship, while he meanwhile moved up to this island in 1905 started building this estate as a final project in his career, a place just to live off a very short time he had remaining. But he moves here in 1905, he starts building the home in 1906. He was still alive when it was completed in 1909. The family moved in, and then he died in 1943. <laughs> at 86 years of age. It turns out he had a bad case of executive stress. <laughs> Once he got out of the, uh, the, the construction business, he lived a long, happy life here on the island. Doesn't that make you want to move? <laughs> now, Moran was the architect of this home. He brought all his shipbuilders from Seattle to build it, and I think you'll agree when you wander through it. I personally do not think any of the shipbuilders ever built a home. I think Moran was convincing everyone it would all be launched out to sea when completed. But the foundation blows 16 feet into the solid rock below. The first two floors are solid, steel-reinforced concrete, and it supports six tons of copper sheeting on the roof above. The home is definitely here to stay. And this organ, uh, built in New York by the Aeolian Organ Company, the original cost was $16,000. Today, building organs similar in size, millions in cost. But all of the pipes that you see up front, you must realize these are not working pipes. This is all of the facade. The real pipes are hidden behind almost 2,000 working pipes. It's a huge organ. But I mentioned the keyboard sits out of sight in the balcony for an interesting reason. Moran loved music. He loved the organ. He could not play it. This organ happened to be a player organ, like a player piano. He put rolls in it. It plays itself. Now, Moran did not want anyone to know this. When he performed, he'd leave his guests sitting alone, as you are. He'd sneak up alone. No one saw him. They congratulated him on marvelous country. Today, I kid you not, I am playing. Uh, the, the player mechanism no longer works. You don't believe me. <laughs> I, I will throw a few mistakes in every now and then to prove it. Uh, hopefully not too many mistakes.
1938, uh, Moran uh, decided to uh, sell Rosario. He knew his kids uh, wouldn't be able to afford it. He actually put it on the market. Uh, and he sold it to a uh, Californian man named Donald Rehm, R-H-E-E-M, Rehm Manufacturing, Rehm hot, hot Water Heaters today. And uh, Donald Rehm was actually buying this place for not really himself, but more for his wife. Um, she liked to have a good time in the Bay Area, and he sort of wanted her away from his industrial business life, and so he bought this uh, place for her to have a good time. Uh, they owned for 20 years, and unfortunately, uh, Mrs. Rehm passed away here, but uh, she sort of stuck around. I have to tell you, uh, for years, guests could stay in the mansion, and for many years, they reported uh, bizarre ghost stories. Mm -hmm. Now, I've worked here many years, and I, I, I've never met the ghost of Mrs. Rehm, and I don't ever plan to meet the ghost, but uh, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that um, when she was here, she liked to... Uh, go have a good time in East Sound and, and she'd go play poker with the local boys at the general store and to get to town from here she would drive a motorcycle and she'd roll out of bed about mid-afternoon and never get dressed. She'd wear a red flaming nightgown while driving her motorcycle in town. So if you're wandering around alone tonight at the mansion and you happen to see a uh, red nightgown breeze by, uh, don't tell anybody. Uh, but Reed owned the home for 20 years. He sold to a Texan who owned for two years. And finally, a, uh, a Seattle man named Gilbert Geyser purchased the estate. He turned it into the resort. So it has been a resort since 60. And today it's all listed on the National Register of Historic Places, which we're very proud of. Uh, in, in fact, I'm going to uh, play another piece on the organ and take you back to uh, 1925. And in 1925, there was an interesting film that came out. I won't even tell you the name. Well, I should tell you the name because there's a young child here. Uh, it's called Phantom of the Opera. And there's a scene in Phantom of the Opera where the, the woman is reaching for the phantom's mask. And you might want to cover uh, the child's eyes. And in fact, you might want to cover your own eyes. You just don't <laughs> want to scare anybody. 